Hello and welcome to TA Made Simple, a series of videos where myself and Bob Cook, a transactional analysis therapist, I always get that wrong, analysis therapist, a man trained in TA, talks about the aspects of transactional analysis. If you've stumbled on this video um, as a single video, find it in the playlist because this is one of a whole section explaining TA theory. And mm. I think this is a particularly interesting topic we're going to look at today. Mm. It's about developing your identity as a TA therapist. Correct. As opposed... As opposed. To, as opposed <laughs> to a client-centered therapist. Yes. Or a gestalt psychotherapist. Yes. Or an existential psychotherapist. Or, a, you know, any, any of these different brands of therapy. But what makes transactional analysis psychotherapist or psychotherapy stand out in terms of theoretical understanding, identity formulation. And that's so it's about what makes us up as TA therapists, which is different. Uh, what are the philosophical assumptions that we follow besides the practical models? Yes, I think that's the interesting one. And I'm going to start off, I'm going to make a guess here, Bob. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm going to make a bit of a guess here. I think the first position is that TA has a tripartite view of personality, maybe. That's right. The, the, <laughs> we'll start there anyway. Yeah. Uh, the idea that the, the, the personality is split into three, tri-party, uh, parent, adult, child. And as we showed earlier in this, these videos, uh, uh, the person is divided into three, the parent ego state, the adult ego state, and the child ego state. And all TA practitioners uh, will have that model in their head. Yeah, You're absolutely correct. And that's very different from, say, the client-centered position, which, is a, which, if I've got this right, is a unitary model of personality. It is. It is in classic person-centered therapy. You know, um, configurations of self by Dave Mims would see us as having sub-personalities, uh -huh. crucially surrounded by a circle. So we would have lots of different personalities. But you're right, we would be a unitary whole. Yeah, so it's very different. So all, all TA therapists, if they've been trained with this tripart model, will, you know, look for what part of the self or what ego state the, per, the client's coming from when they walk in the room in terms of energy. And uh, if you're classically trained, the idea is that the person uh, needs to have more energy in the here and now, which is the adult ego state. And if it's got, not got much energy or has a fragile sense of self, then the treatment's going to be, first of all, helping the person be more in the here and now and building up their adult ego state. Yes, and, and, and in a classic sense, that's what TA was all about, isn't it? Right. Reinforcing or strengthening, you mentioned this before, strengthening yeah. the adult ego state, not getting lost in the past and no. parental or, or the, the confusing and overwhelming emotions of the child. Yeah, the psychoanalytical you know, study of the first three years of the infant, uh, which of course, interestingly enough, uh, Byrne had spent the last 16 years of his own self-analysis, but he wanted something quicker. Uh, so his idea was this tripite model and strengthen the adult ego state. So it was, as I've said many times, uh, almost like a, uh, an early CBT therapist, highly educative, really, Eric Byrne was. And now, of course, it's changed and evolved in 50 years um but you're right the tripart model is the first step if you like but if we look at some philosophical assumptions underneath this i yeah. think the first one is that it's a humanistic model yes. so i went to the ta community website and i put in philosophical i was interested in the first philosophical assumption so i'm just going to read out the first one and it says TA is a humanistic philosophy, right? Uh, this means we focus on each individual's potential and stress the importance of growth and personal development. So they are, so TA is bang in the middle of the humanistic revolution of Carl Rogers in the early 1950s. Yeah, I mean, I guess the, 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 the main difference would be about how humanism would be viewed in a person-centered way. This always confuses students. How come one's called humanism and one's called psychoanalytical? 
And I, I guess the difference there is that both the therapies view people as humans. They're not analysands, as Freud would say, someone to be interpreted and studied like um like a, an animal in a cage yeah, yeah. that's how i that's exactly how i see it yeah, which, yeah which takes us up to another philosophical assumption uh, of a ta practitioner which is the the second one not that it wasn't on the website but i'm going to give you for my view of uh philosophical assumptions of transaction analysis um and that's open communication mm. very different the principle of open communication is very difficult from the difference from the psychoanalytical position of one up, one down, and interpretation. So Byrne really very much believed in open communication, adult to adult communication, and um, contracts, and everything needed to be transparent. Mm. It wasn't about uh, a one up, one down state of psychoanalysis. No, and I guess I guess if we were to draw a, a stereotypical picture of this, this would be someone on a couch um, with someone with a bow tie, maybe a beard, talking in a, a faux German accent, saying things like, I'm, I'm not going to do a German accent, I won't be patronising, but tell me about your mother, or, or that type of thing, writing notes, hiding behind a pad. Yeah, yeah. TA is very much about a person-to-person -person interaction, isn't it? Yeah, and, it, and also contracts are very important in the, in the sense of open communication. So both parties, client and therapist, are sharing their form of treatment, if you like, mm. instead of this analytical sense again. Yes, it was a big departure, wasn't it, from, from what would have been classical Freudian ideas. Mm. Mm. Completely. Yeah. What, what else um, kind of formulates or helps the professional formation of a TA therapist, Bob? Uh, and this is a very big one. This is probably what most people to think of TA therapists think about in the public eye, perhaps as social workers or teachers. And that's the principle of I'm okay, you're okay. Mm. You know, the principle of that people's behaviors might not be okay, but in its essence, people are born okay. And um, it is the environment around them, which may turn, turn them into frogs. But as they work in the TA therapy, they can start uh, becoming princes that the actualization for change is in all of us. Yeah. Uh, so people are born okay, and other people are okay, that humanistic principle. Um, and I think that's a really important one. Yes, it comes, from a it comes from a position, doesn't it, that it's behaviours that call pe cause people difficulties, not the, the entirety of who they are. Correct. Separating okay. the sin from the sinner is what I used to say to my... Yeah, my well, I think yeah. that's really important for therapists because... If you hold that philosophical assumption, I think you really can then open your mind to curiosity. Yeah. And, you know, that's so important that we can, I spent most of my life moving away from assumptions mm. or attempting to not, you know, to do that. And that's very, very hard. And if I can hold that I'm okay, you're okay position, it takes a lot of doing, by the way. Oh, yeah. Many of the clients I can see, my heart is much more open to the heart of the person sitting in front of me you know yeah. so i think it's a really good position to come from and i guess if you're coming from that position they're more likely to open their heart to you yeah correct absolutely uh, another philosophical assumption is that all humans have the capacity to think mm. you know they all have the capacity to think and make their own decisions if you like and yes. that's a really interesting one we aren't brain dead, so we all can have, all can think, and it's about the promotion of helping the person to think again and to be in the here and now and reinforcing their adult, if you like. Yes, yes, it's the the idea that we're not fixed, mm. and mm. and the, there's a potential for change if people want to engage in it. Mm. Mm. And another philosophical assumption is around autonomy, spontaneity. You know, Byrne talked about a lot about his transaction analysis, his early transaction analysis. Um, part of the treatment plan would be about that we can uh, discovering, evolving, enhancing the human's capacity for autonomy, uh, freedom, and change. Yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's that's the the whole thing. That's quite a West Coast America philosophy. Well, and that's where it comes from. Yeah. That's where it comes from. This idea that you know we're all different. We're we're all okay. We're a, we're a big tribe but we are different people. It's, it's quite a kind of social 
construct in there, isn't there? And, and of course, Burn was very much, you know, lived on the West Coast, didn't he? he? Lived in California. Yeah, yeah. And he's part of that radical movement, if you like, that we talked about earlier. But those philosophies, those assumptions, which come from what you've just said there, are a great bedrock if you think of relational psychotherapy today. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, they, they, they formulate the, the, what we call the Izao relationship, don't they? The, you know, Martin Buber, who famously said Izao, he used the term thou because he didn't want to say I and you because yeah. he wanted to see someone more than just another person. He wanted to use a biblical term to signify he saw them as a spiritual being oh. more than just another person. Yeah, interesting. That's right. So if you've got those philosophical assumptions when you sit down with the client in front of you, yeah, I think relational psychotherapy of today, if you want to look at it that way, uh, is far more likely to happen because you've got a non-judgmental position. You've got a position of growth. You've got a position of seeing the person's actualization rather than their restriction. You've got a position of um, really working with the person towards transparent growth from an open communication, egalitarian position. Yes. Yes, and that, that, that term egalitarian is an interesting one, isn't it? Because, because, you know, it does, there's still, I think, some expertise in TA more than perhaps the humanistic world because ultimately it, it still is to some extent a taught model, isn't it? You'd be, you'd be talking about parent, adult and child. We're in the humanistic world. We tend not to talk about the theory too much. It's all based in the relationship. Well, it's certainly more egalitarian than, as I say, Freudian psychoanalysis. Oh, yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely it is. And it's an important change from those. If you think TA came out of the middle 1950s, mm. when psychoanalysis was still very much you know, popular. I know we've got the rise of humanism, Carl Rogers coming along and Fritz Perls and... We've got that, as you said, that sort of whole revolution. And TA f does fit into that revolution. It's an important psychotherapy. And I know TA uh, uh, has perhaps split into to different ways of thinking about change. But those assumptions that I've just talked about, you know, you're okay, I'm okay, everybody's got the capacity to change, to make decisions, to change, are really important ways of fundamentally looking at the human being when they come in front of you. Yes, and I'm I'm wondering. I'm going to I'm going to be a bit controversial here, Bob. No, are yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> who, who, who knew, Bob? Um, yeah, you can say that is fun. But anyway, I love uh, you. Okay, um, I I think that um, that actually a lot of a lot of humanistic therapies, whether they're person centred or Gestalt therapists, would 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 embrace those ideas. I'm okay, and you're okay. They might not use that terminology. People have got the ability to change the non-judgmental approach. Um, I guess the only the only difference would be um, the the tripartite view of personality, uh, yeah. which which of course is unique to TA um, and to some extent psychoanalysis. It's a slightly different tripart view of personality. But I think I think it's pretty universal to be honest, Bob. If I could be that controversial, no, I I agree with because. Once we get onto the uh, theoretical model, that's different. Once yep. we get to some of the methods to do with inquiry, attunement, involvement, yes. get onto some of the sort of some people call gimmicks, but I think they're very powerful techniques like ego grams, like yeah. the use of uh, understanding the drama triangle, um, various things that are peculiar to TA, uh, and then treatment planning with deconfusion, decontamination, XXXX then that, that's, they're different. Gestalt has interruptions to contact and has its own methodology. Yes. So once we get into theoretical models and methods, they may slightly, well, yes. importantly differ. But in terms of the philosophical or philosophical assumptions from the 1950s and that humanistic revolution, I hope they are very similar. They are. I mean, I guess, I guess one thing that separates the, the person-centred humanistic world from the tier humanistic world is where we work, you know, person-centered therapists work in, 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 on the edge of awareness. In other words, we, we don't go into the subconscious process. Yeah. So we work on the edge of awareness, whereas it's my, it's my kind of understanding that in TA, there's, there's a kind of exploration of subconscious process, bringing the subconscious to conscious. Well, now you're in a really interesting divide because 
Eric Byrne, it, classical TEA therapy, 1961, talks about strengthening the adult. He talks about the parent ego state. He talks about the child ego case and educative processes. Mm -hmm. When he was talking about going into the unknown that you just talked about or the unconscious, he would send people off to Gestalt psychotherapists or send them off to psychoanalysts. So he, he actually, uh, when he talked about his new TA, it was all about strengthening the adult ego state up. Right. But how is that, how is that now in, in, in contemporary TA? Oh, now we've changed a lot. Yes. yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's simple. The last, you know, the last fourteen videos, I've talked about all the different approaches. Yeah. Ending up with relational TA, which is really, in some ways, very psychodynamically based. Though some people might argue against that, but we've checked many of these different splits, these changes. They're all you have a completely different feel of transactional analysis today than, of course, in 1961, where the emphasis was very different. Absolutely. And I, th I think one of the things I've come to appreciate over the years is that with psychotherapy, it, it, really, it really is about looking at your whole life. Whereas with counselling, it might be looking at aspects or difficulties of your life. Yeah, and how to manage them in the present. And how to manage them in the present. And I think, I think that's, a, a, that's a big dividing line. Although I'd, I'd acknowledge that some person-centred therapists may work with whole life development. Mm, wow. um, but I think generally speaking it was person center therapy was developed as a more kind of um growth model working on what people could alter yeah, definitely and so was transaction analysis yeah 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 so i think you're right about these philosophical assumptions that, that come out of the humanist revolution yes it's interesting that um you know we, we talked a little bit about existentialism in the last video mm. um we talked a little bit about um you know, lots of different philosophers. And it, it's, inter it's interesting that, that a lot of therapy is grounded in philosophy as opposed to science. Yeah, the art is, that's where the art, psychotherapy is where the art and science come together. Yes. Uh, and I really, really think that's true. Yes. So if you're watching this and, uh, and you're thinking, oh, well, you know, now I know what the philosophical differences are between person centered as person centered practitioner and a TA practitioner might be really, anyways. <laughs> yeah well that's our views yeah but it that's, means, our views. that's our views but I think they're, they're pretty universal and they'd be yeah, pretty right. grounded in literature as well yeah yeah I'm okay you're okay look at uh, unconditional positive regard we could go on couldn't we we could go on forever um if you if you're wanting um more of this type of video and this is only one of a number then go into the bar below and I'll put a link into the playlist and you can see the entire uh, playlist where we start really with just the, the TA um, structural model and we've worked our way through in these videos right, right up right up to this here yeah and, and the next one is I'm just so I want to tell you ahead of time yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, TA treatment planning and diagnosis there we go not to be missed that is a that is definitely a not to be missed one, isn't it? So um, thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.